All right, round two of our post game recap sort of thing that I'm gonna start doing. Um, hopefully this time it's a little less scuffed, but we'll see as we go along. Um, speaking of less scuffed, tonight was a very good performance from the Kings. Um, I thought the start that we had was exactly what we need to do. That's been the Achilles heel of the team the whole season is going down early um, and then having to claw their way back. And so coming out well rested from the extended layover that they had in Denver, um, it really showed the team had life and looked really good. Um, the second period, you know, was a little not as not as energetic. Um, I think the Blues definitely took some of the momentum back. But then the third period was really solid shutdown D from the from the team, which, you know, going forward, if if we want to consider ourselves a playoff team, a contending team, um, you need to be able to shut teams down. And and I thought they were able to do it really well, um, especially with all three lines, the first, second, and third line, really being able to throw anybody out there and knowing that they're going to play sound defensively. Um, speaking of the third line, we definitely have to talk about the return of Jared Anderson Dolan. Um, it was huge. The third line tonight was the best line uh, on the in the game uh, for any team. They just they just play really well together. You know, it's it's simple but super effective, and uh, it really you know it kind of causes not a log jam, but some questions that I think Tom McClellan and the coaching staff is going to have to answer pretty soon, especially with, with Dustin Brown coming back. Um, but, I mean, having a third line like that that you have total faith in is going to chip in offensively, um, you know, plays good defense, and hopefully builds builds potential going forward is, is a really solid thing. Um. Speaking of the lines, though, this is where I think the Kings might get into some trouble. So these were the lines tonight, and obviously Dustin Brown being injured um, makes things a little easier. But once Brown returns, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Um, you know, you have the first line that's not going to get broken up. You have this third line that um, that won't get broken up because they're dominating right now um so i think the second line is really the line in question it's what do you do with jeff carter um jeff carter looked really good at the beginning of the season um the extended time off definitely did wonders for him he was flying out there he's putting up points i just don't know if he can play sec i don't think he should be playing second line minutes to be honest um I think he's just a little too old, a little too worn down to to be a second line player. Um, now putting him on the fourth line is maybe a little steep, but I think Adrian Kepe is definitely deserved second line minutes. Um, and then Anthony Siu, I think, I guess that's where the problem comes is the second line. I like Velarde being a second line center right now. I think it's perfect. He's getting a lot of experience. He's getting thrown in situations that he's going to need to, you know, be able to handle. But I don't think Athanasiu and I don't think Jeff Carter are good line mates for him. I think individually Athanasiu is going to chip in with some offense. He's going to put some points on the board to make it look like they're effective. But Velarde, he he thrives on good playmaking and I just don't think that Carter brings the playmaking. I don't think Anthony Siu brings the playmaking that will let Velarde really strive. When you look at the points he's putting up, a lot of it's in OT when he's playing with you know a guy like Kempe or or someone else. So you know we'll see how that goes. Like I said, I would probably put Carter on the fourth line. It's a little mean. You'd have the more Grundstrom line on the third line. Anthony Siu probably gets knocked down to the fourth line. And then what I would like to see is bringing up a prospect. I think that Sammy Fagamo is NHL ready. I really do. Um, I don't know if they're going to bring him up. I don't know if that's the plan. But I think a line of 
Kempe, Velarde, and Fagamo would be exactly what Velarde needs. He gets a sniper in Fagamo. He gets Kempe is putting up goals right now, but is also a pretty good playmaker. He's stepped up his defense a lot um, and just brings a little bit of an X factor to this line that um, that I think would mesh well with with all three of these guys. But like I said, I don't really know what's going to happen. Um, obviously, we'll have to see when Dustin Brown comes back. But I just think you have now a third line that's untouchable and really deserves as many minutes as you can throw them. Um, you have a guy like Kempe who, you know, you, you're not going to put him on the fourth line. So you put him on the second line. I think Velarde deserves to be on the second line. And then, I don't know. I don't know if they want Athanasiu to keep playing with Velarde and Carter. I I don't personally see that line working right now and definitely not in the future, but we'll see. Um, I guess my little, I don't know, hot take would be, you know, looking at the, the years left, um, one year left for Alex follow UFA. Is he a trade target? I, I don't want to see him leave LA. Um, I love Iofalo, but he's not the first line winger of the future. We have a lot of young guys who, you know, obviously are listed as centers, but most likely are going to make the NHL as a winger. Um, so I don't know. Do we trade Ayafalo? Do we keep him for this season? Let him walk? Are we going to resign Ayafalo and then turn him into, what, a third or fourth liner? It's going to be interesting. I know Kopi loves him. Um, I know this line, no matter how much fans, you know, want to see changes, they're not going to get broken up. They're going to stay together, and we'll just have to see what happens. Um, I guess my my last kind of takeaway from the game is going to be the power play. Um, I know there was a lot of talk during the broadcast of the power play not being very good in Colorado, which I know the numbers were 0 for 8, um, but I, I think the power play looked good in Colorado. Colorado just has a very good penalty kill. And tonight, um, obviously, the power play gets on the board really early, kind of set the tone for the game. And it was really, it was the breakouts. And I'll be honest, I'm a huge Adrian Kempe fan. I'm probably the biggest Kempe fan who's not a 13-year-old girl. Um, and his first breakout where he didn't, they didn't score, but his first breakout was exactly what I've been dying to see from him since he entered the league. I mean, he has all the tools to be such a good player. And it just seems like he doesn't use them. He doesn't want to put them together for some reason. And so, um, I have the video clip here. against Colorado. The Kings on a SoCal this Chevy is, power this play is a for the first time tonight. This is type of play. It just Kempe using speed, speed into the zone. Kempe to the net. To the Stop by Bennington. More because when he does, we're going to be a better team. This is the, the Kings winding up once again on their power play. He eventually scored on. It's Carter uh, up the far wall. Down he makes the standard. Pass it off to I follow. Then Walker. this was the second one. I thought this was a really good break. He's leading 2 0. Getting JD involved. On the power play for the I second time. Anderson speed. Dolan uh, over the line. Again, JD. For as, as much as he's hyped and touted as a, you know, a, a defensively minded kind of third, fourth line center, he brings a lot of offense and, and creativity too, which is huge. You know, um, I think if you have a guy like him who I think knows his role, I think especially going forward, he knows his role, um, you know, with guys like with Kaliev, uh, Byfield, Turcotte, Kupari, um, he knows where he stands in the depth chart and it's going to be in the bottom six. But I feel like he is comfortable in that role and, and doesn't mind that role. But he still adds, you know, an X factor that unfortunately a guy like Blake Lazat doesn't really add. Um but, you know, looking back at at the highlights, I thought the the fight, the Athens U fight, it was it was fun. I think he, he looked a lot better than uh than Krug there, but I don't know, you kinda think that a guy like Athens U is so strong, such a fast skater. I was expecting a little bit more of a of a better win, but it was a good fight nonetheless. The one goal against, it was unfortunate. Um you'd like to see Peterson get a shout out, but he does get the assist to get his first point of the season. Um, might be his first point of his career. I should have double-checked that. 
But uh, again, looking at other guys who scored points, Kopitar continued to dominate tonight, gets the empty netter, a little bit of a lucky one, but, you know, the goal's a goal. And the assist on the power play, um, Dowdy, another power play goal. Again, I talked about the power play looking good, and Dowdy's a huge part of it. Um, I think he added a a level to his his shot that was never there before, and it really makes the power play a three headed monster of of Kopitar who can shoot, but obviously is is going to be the main you know quarterback and and looking for a pass. You have Kempe who's also found another level of of shooting and and scoring one timers. He's a threat to the defense, and Dowdy's a threat now too. So when the years passed, we struggled because kind of seemed like everyone knew Kopitar was going to look for something. Now we have better looks. We have more guys who, you know, ha- make the defense have to think and, and defend. And that's why the power play has been probably the best part of the year for us. Like I said, um, third line gets on the board twice. Anderson Dolan, two assists. More a goal and assist. Grundstrom gets one of the goals. More obviously got the second goal. Um, and it was a good play from Walker as well. And then... Um, you know, Dowdy getting an assist on the, the Kopitar empty net as well was was what rounded out the game. Uh, pretty long video overall. Great game. Um, it's it's a nice one after the two losses to Colorado. I think we deserve to lose those for sure. We were not as good as Colorado, but we didn't play terribly. And um, so to come out here tonight against what's now our, you know, kind of the benchmark that we have to to leapfrog to get in the playoffs and really just outplay them um, is huge. I do still really believe that the Kings have a chance to make the playoffs. Um, They've played well against St. Louis this year. If they win the rest of the games against St. Louis and both teams kind of continue on their pace, theoretically, we're in the playoffs. Um, Do I think we're ready for the playoffs? No. No. uh, we've not looked good against Vegas. That's probably who we'd go up against. But um, this isn't really a year to tank. Um, if it gives guys like Velarde, JD, Bjornfoot, uh, Mike Anderson experience, Cal Peterson also experience in, in playoff atmospheres, then that's a win in my book. And it's just fun to, to win. And it's fun to have something to root for. Um which has you know, kind of been lacking the last couple of years for Kings hockey. But this season, it, it just feels different. It feels like every every game I'm going in thinking, we have a chance. We can win. Let's see what happens. Um, and that's a really good, really good thing to have. Um, thank you, everybody who watched and stuck around. And uh, I will see you guys on Friday night when we play Vegas, which... Um, It'll be an interesting game. You know, we haven't looked good against Vegas. They're obviously the best team in the division. So I want to see what they can do, especially coming off a good one like this. Um, Hopefully we're still rested. I do hope that Brown comes back. Um, I don't know. He's been a little hot and cold with the fan base, but um, I I like to watch him play. I think I think he makes the team better. And so hopefully he returns. We'll see how the lineups look. We'll see what happens with Kempe. We'll see what happens with Carter if he does come back. But yeah, see you guys Friday.